I saw the picture because maybe somebody, Sasha, someone must have retweeted who I thought. Sure, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I've known Jungleman since he's 19 or 20. The first day, uh, again, I have to regret, just to give you history like I always do, I get a call. Daniel Cates just got 20000 taken away from him at the Bellagio because he's under 21. Can you get the money back? I think the person who called me was Sorrell. Mizzy. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I don't know. Uh, let me call Doug Dalton, who was the card room manager. But they had waited till the next day to contact me. And I talked to Doug. He said, I probably could have got him his money back. But we're forced to file like a police report that an unraged guy was playing. And when the police came in, they take the money. And once they get the money, there's nothing I can do. That was what happened. I don't think he ever got the money back. Maybe he did. I, you know, I, I, I've never even talked to him about it. I've also been involved with Jungleman arbitrating some different things. And I can tell you when Jungleman was young, he had, he didn't have the ability to really speak to women. He may have even been afraid of women. Okay. Cause he wasn't very confident in himself in a social situation, but having a lot of money sometimes will bring at least some of the women around. Now, my advice to men, whether you get money or not, is be with the woman who would be with you when you're broke and working at the gas station. And so even though it's no fun to lose all your money and be, not have the money you once had, and I don't have the money I, I once had, the benefit of it is you will find out if you're with the person who's with you for you or whether, you know, I have at times had a girlfriend when Alex and I weren't together, when I had a lot of money. And then you do have to kind of ask what's she there for? Is it me? even though she's telling you it's for you or is it because of the lifestyle and the money? And I'm not even saying that's horrible if that's what you want and that's what she's want. But the truth is that's not what I want. Uh, I want someone who's intelligent. The beauty thing fades. It may be a good introduction, but that's not an issue. And I even tell Alex, like I eat too much ice cream these days and she'll say something. I'll say, well, you have some and I have some, if we're going to get fat, we're getting fat together, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but having someone who's with you, even if you didn't have money, is really a nice thing to have, because that means when other problems happen, she's still going to be there. Mm. So if you, you know, that's so you shouldn't be thinking, who can I get? I realize, young man, that's who he can get now, has a lot of money. You should be finding the one who didn't care. Uh, and now with Jungleman with the video, that was what you first asked me about. The, the photo and yeah, the video he was in. I saw there. the photo and then I saw, I follow Christy Arnett. Right. And I saw the video and I called Alex over. I said, you got to watch this. And the pornography, you know, I, I played at Larry Flynn's house. I used to go, I went to his bachelor party. I went to his Christmas, Christmas parties party. where they have women <laughs> without clothes and doing all sorts of things. Okay. So it's not like, uh, these things, you know, I'm kind of jaded that it's not that big a deal to me seeing women without their clothes on, uh, especially women I'm not doing anything with. Uh, definitely, it's not a big deal to me. Uh, maybe when I was younger, it might have been something that piqued my interest. Certainly not now, just not that big a deal. Like even at this one game where they have these women with almost no clothes on, all I'm thinking to myself is, good, these guys are getting drunk and it's distracting them and it's, it's better for me. I'm mm-hmm. thinking of in, the, in those terms. But anyway, so I, we watched the Christy Arnett thing. I don't know if you've seen that. I saw that. Yeah, it's very, very, very funny reaction video. Very too. funny reaction. And then I, and then Alex said, "Have you watched this Jungleman thing?" And I said, "No, because I don't know what's in it. But sometimes when you see something, you can't unsee it." And I said, "Yo, I'm a strong believer. I've sometimes had to hear or see something I don't want to see, and then it's harder to get out of your mind." So I said, "I don't know if it's bad. I don't know what it is." I'm I'm happy with seeing Christie's reaction. Yeah, I mean, I imagine for someone like Helmuth when he walks through the hallways, he's just getting bombarded because he's also you know he's just tall guy and he, you know flashy with the coat and with the outfit with the hat and stuff like that. Very recognizable man. So I've seen him just get bombarded in the hallway. I don't I don't know. He you... loves it. We I didn't do it, but some people pull a really funny prank prank on him one time. I think it was at Foxwoods because Phil loved all the attention, and this is before it even got real big. But so Phil was like one of the top few names in poker, and like. It was, it was a point, you know, I would have been barely recognizable at that. So early on. 
And there was some, so what they did is there's some guy, I don't even know if he won a tournament, but he wasn't that big a name. And uh -huh. let's just pick a name, random name, Benny, because uh, I don't remember what the guy's name was. And what they did is they set up a thing with some girls and they told the girls the prank they're going to pull. They're going to have all these girls walking in. You're talking about the 14 girls and Phil standing there and this guy, Benny, stand there. And all the girls are going to say, hey, Benny, I really like the way you play poker. So they have all the girls go to Phil, to this other guy, to Benny, and Phil's standing there and no one's with Phil. And Phil's looking at this. This guy's hardly anyone knows him. And he's like, I'm Phil Helmuth, <laughs> you know. And these girls like look over and they're still talking to Benny. Oh, Benny, you really play good. And it was a prank they pulled on him. <laughs> it was funny. I think well, I've heard someone in the chat. They really want to see her for sure. No, it, it, well, she's beautiful. Okay. I, I well, your nephew more than you. Remember? <laughs> yeah. I only, I'm lucky. I've only had beautiful women as partners. And I don't mean to be so superficial. <laughs> I, I don't mean to be superficial. There's a funny story about that. <laughs> You'll okay, help you. Down. okay give, me, give me the story okay i'm always worried even like now giving tips on relationships to men who aren't nice men because they're going to pick up some really hot women okay i mean not that that is the i mean for me they have to be intelligent too if she wasn't intelligent i wouldn't be with her but let me tell you a funny story okay uh we're gonna pick up really hot women <laughs> i was well i had to be still in my 20s because i was in illinois no, I had to be 30 because I got married when I was 30. And my wife was beautiful, okay? Uh, she was like one of these women who stopped the room. She was a bridge player. I can even remember the first day I saw her, I was playing bridge. I used to only play national tournaments. I was a top bridge player. But usually the month before a national tournament, that's not something I did for money, by the way. You don't play bridge for money unless you're a paid professional. Which I made enough money playing poker. I didn't want that. But anyway, uh, a month before a national tournament, I would practice at the local club. And she walked in and I said to my partner, who the heck is that? Because she's gorgeous. He said, yeah, she's been playing bridge here. Uh, and uh, it ended up, she was married at the time. And when I found that, I stopped going to the bridge club because I really liked her. She's real smart. And I found out she was a professional poker player too. She made her money playing poker and she was a top woman bridge player. At one point, we were the second greatest uh mixed couple in the world that's how good a player she was wow. okay or in the in the united states in acbl we're the second greatest in the magazine so she was really good and you know as a woman player and i was a good man player uh but anyway um so here i you know for it ended up i stayed away from her just because i was attracted to her you know I, i'm not the type of person to break up a marriage and i was very confident in myself around women now that might surprise you because let's face it, I haven't made it on my looks. That's not been <laughs> the, the secret of my success. But I always used to say, if I could talk to a woman and get her like engaged, I would have a good shot. And, and really history pretty much proved me out, okay? That I'm a good talker as you've seen. And I'm, as I told my son Joe, and I said on your previous thing, I treat women nicely uh -huh. and I don't treat them, although I've, probably been objectifying them here and in other situations. I normally don't, and it's credit to my older sisters who were both intelligent women, became professors. So I had a good environment to respect women. A lot of guys, if, like if I had only grown up with brothers, then I'd probably grown up just always objectifying women because that's what you have, you know? So I, I'm not even gonna be criticizing, you know, men who are like that because that's the typical poker room banter looking at women and objectifying them. Right. Uh, but anyway, um, at three years after I'd met the woman who became my wife, Joey's mother, for people who know Joey, she came to me and said, do you know what lawyer? I want to get divorced. And I had my lawyer do, do the divorce. A year later, we were married. Okay. So I knew her four years before we got married. But anyway, here we are. One time some outing got planned where I don't know if it was a golf outing and then it was a dinner with it. I don't know, but it was a situation where we were going to meet everyone's wives. And I can name the, the guys, Jerry Austin. He's a sports better in Vegas a guy named Rosie. I can't remember the fourth guy, but it was four of us, which was the reason it makes me think it was a golf foursome. And I remember thinking my wife's gorgeous. And these guys have like 
t-shirts with pizza stain, beer bellies, really motley looking group. And again, not that I look any better than them as far as handsomeness, but uh, probably wasn't wearing a t-shirt because my wife was an art major and dressed me up nicely. Okay. But uh, I was actually a little thinking, I don't want to be a show off because she's going to look like a trophy wife. And we see it in Vegas all the time, guys with money, trophy wife, whatever. We met for this dinner and these are four guys with half of their shirt out and, you know, looking pretty disheveled, including myself. All four wives were gorgeous. And I'm thinking to myself, how did these guys and me end up with these beautiful women? And part of it is poker players are good hustlers. They're good talkers. It does go with the whole thing of being able to do that. And so, yeah, you know, poker players and you know we see it in Vegas and I'm sure you've seen I want to name names some of these guys who are really lousy guys no more good looking than myself even and they've got just a gorgeous woman and even some not only a gorgeous woman but someone who's really has it going you know pretty intelligent whatever because the guy's just a good hustler and a good talker just like me